You're watching Dukascopy TV. I'm Elaine Stanson. A proposed ETF anticipates that diamonds will become a recognized asset class. Edward Sterk, research analyst with BMO Capital Markets, joins me now on the line. Edward, after some volatility, diamond prices have stabilized and begun a cautious recovery. What are the main factors that have contributed to this? In 2011, the, 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 um, the prices were, were, were inflated quite dramatically by um, speculation in the cutting and polishing centers that there was going to be a, a forthcoming um, shortage in the supply of, of rough diamonds relative to demand. Um, it was really just a bubble. Prices burst and um, came back down to more, um, more rational levels, more commensurate with, uh, with the sort of supply and demand uh, for polished and rough diamonds at that time. Now, since then, we've seen, um, over time, a, a gradual stabilization in the outlook for the world's economy. I mean, that's, that's fairly relative. It, you know, things are still a little shaky in, in different parts of the world. But in particular, we've seen fairly consistent growth in diamond demand out of the U.S., um, and also out of China and the other emerging markets. Um, some markets have been a bit more volatile. India has been uh, fairly beholden to the strength and weakness of the rupee in terms of diamond demand. Um, but overall, the uh, the outlook has been steadily improving, and that's um, resulted in, in uh, pretty stable diamond prices. Does the collapse or recent volatility of gold prices mean that diamonds could become a recognized asset class and another form of haven investment? My view is that that would be unlikely, um, and the reason being that diamonds are totally non-fungible. Um, so if you take two diamonds, um, they're, 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 there are no two diamonds really that are alike, um, and if you asked five people to value a diamond, you'd get five different answers. The great thing that gold has is that it's, it's one price for one ounce of gold. Um, now that price obviously goes up and down, but um, there's much less ambiguity in, in what the true value of your investment is. Now, I would say that there is, uh, there is still um, an opportunity to invest in diamonds, but it's probably more akin to the fine art or, or the fine wine market, where you invest in the top end of the diamond market, so large or special stones, um, and those, uh, you know, I think can be expected to appreciate in value through time. Of course, one has to remember that just like the fine art and, and the fine wine market, um, it's not a terribly liquid market. So realizing um, any increase in value comes with its own risks. Finally, what are the advantages and the disadvantages of diamonds as investments? Well, in terms of advantages, I'd say um, we've got a very uh, constrained supply outlook over the rest of this decade and probably further. Um, there's simply been no new significant diamond deposits discovered um, of a world-class uh, scale in the last 20 years, um, possibly even, even longer than that now. Um, and looking ahead, uh, with diamond demand expected to grow from the emerging markets and fairly stable and steady demand growth from the U.S. and actually possibly even Europe now, um, the outlook is one where we've got growing demand but a very constrained supply um, forecast and that should result in diamond prices steadily increasing over time. Um, now, I would caution that due to some uh, structural factors within the diamond industry, that, pr those, that forecast price increase will probably be fairly volatile at times, but the overall trend should be upwards. Edward, thank you for that and thank you for joining me on the line today. And that's all we have time for for now, but do check back later for further updates and interviews from the TV team. Bye for now.